everybody and thank you for tuning in again. I know it's been quite a while since I've had a video come out, especially a commentary video and one that will be informative, finally, not just flashy numbers. All right, so today we're going to be doing, uh, it's actually going to be a replay of yesterday we're going to be watching, but I will be following along. So this is me doing the Sarah and Fenrir instance. Might actually be Fenrir and, and Sarah, sorry. Um, this is on Myth, my 171 genetic with a Dieter. I also did it on my Painkiller genetic, and I will almost certainly have to put in the clip of me doing the Sarah fight on him because it's just a lot easier on Painkiller genetic. You don't really have to use too much effort, so definitely want to show you that because it's my favorite. A little bit harder to do the uh, the actual Gigantes mini boss part. So without further ado, let's start the instance. You will open it up in the dimensional gap where all the other new instances are, so it makes everything easy. Head on inside, and as soon as you enter the instance, you will, you will not trigger it immediately, but if you walk south, you will trigger the Fenrir starting to talk. Um, my cat starting to talk as well. But yeah, as you can see, she'll summon these little dog things. They attack, or they'll look galleons, but um, they're little dogs. They'll attack you, but you don't necessarily have to kill them, uh, as she will obviously kill them after that cast bar finishes. But keep in mind that it won't trigger the spawning of those until you walk south. So if you do need to buff up or anything, um, if you have a GX, just go into cloaking and they trigger it and then you'll have no problem because they can't even see you, they're not boss. Um, and also on painkiller genetic, I just cast painkiller before I walk south and then I just sit there and take ones until that's done. Once they're dead, she'll go into the second spiel where you're locked out of movement until now. Then you want to get cooking, walk down to the center of the map there, center bottom. Obviously, I was not doing too well this round. I think this was the first one I did yesterday. I did this one, then I did Painkiller, and then I did, uh, wrong, yeah, obviously not rock walking the right way. <laughs> then I did Painkiller Genetic last. Or, I think I did Rolling Cutter GX last. Yeah, that was it. So, yeah, you'll walk up here. You'll trigger Fenrir. Uh, one flaw about this is that I don't have it in this video, but when you're locked in these positions, there's actually two instances. There's right now and then after you fight Sarah. You're locked into a conversation where you can't use skills, potions, or anything. Um, you can, all you can use is homunculus skills, so if you have your homunculus, it's probably a good idea to have your homunculus out at this point because if those chimeras were to mob me, they can kill you, and that did happen to me after fighting Sarah one time because there were like a ton of chimeras in the center of the map. All right, so as soon as Fenrir goes away, you need to go into action mode and start moving. Now we will go over the gear that I forgot to talk about before. Boss shield, uh, I've got a Bryn for the knockback of the, you'll see them soon. Those gargoyles spawn after you summon the Gigantes on top of these little towers. There are three on each side. Um, the brain is for the knockback from them. They Their arrows knock back and it's really freaking annoying. So get your Gigantes. There are two medium Gigantes and one ancient Gigantes. Every mob that you summon, there are six ancient Gigantes. The medium Gigantes are meaningless. They are merely just little minions that the ancient Gigantes has follow him. Ancient Gigantes is extremely slow. Uh, Chimeras are just really posing a threat to my uh, <laughs> movement, so that's why I'm killing them. But other than that, all I really care about is this Gigante following me. And I said you gotta get into action because this is all under a timer. Not entirely sure of exactly how long it is. After watching this video, I'm definitely gonna be sure of how long it is. But as for right now, not sure. So more often than not, I will just start killing the uh, gargoyles with the medium gigantes, thinning the herd, and also preventing the gargoyles from attacking me. There was just a fire expansion that I cast for really no reason. I 
think I was just being went into like default mode of how I play. But they obviously have like one bit, so they don't take much damage at all. Warning the cat not to go crazy. This is actually take two of this video because he was going insane before. So now that I've got the two, I leave them towards the center because we need to pull these guys down back to where those were and then across the map and do the same thing down the other side. You need to kill them all together because there's, there's not enough time to be killing them separately. They have 12 million health, so quite a pain. Uh, and that's why I have the Runaway Magic Boots on. Uh, sorry that I didn't mention that they were Runaway Magic Boots, but that's what they are. Because anything else just wouldn't do here. I would imagine that you, you might be able to do it. It would just be really annoying. And things that happen in this instance after the timers are at their desired points are very devastating. Yeah, we gotta get rid of these chimeras so that we have a nice, evenly paced mob. Bring tons of anodynes, too. Uh, and I'm sorry, I didn't go over the Fallen Angel Wing. You can obviously see it's deviant, and by not wearing an evil marching hat, you should realize how much damage these things actually do. So you just wanna stack tons of neutral resistance. your mob moving steadily while trying to damage them as best as possible. And I'm fairly sure that I've decided that on genetic it's actually on Haven I'm more comfortable killing all six Gigantes in one go because he's got more int, his cart cannon is just better. Um, this guy is much more strength based. It's only 92 int right now. And I don't plan to go any higher because he's going to be 120 strength whenever I decide to freaking max him. He's been 171 for like a year. <laughs> but um, yeah, very close to his death right there. So right now I'm just grabbing this Gigantes off the top, just the most out of the way. And the plan right now is to awesome proc of Runaway Magic right there. That's always super helpful, especially right on the spawn point because you clear the Gargoyles and the Medium Gigantes quickly. I've got Assumptio and Blessing Scrolls to make up for my lack of int on this character. Not the Assumptio scrolls for that, but the Blessing scrolls for that. Give me some more dex and int. So now you'll see this is the last warning that you'll get. Fenrir and Sarah will be talking about battling. They were actually at the top left of the map, but it is not important to go there. There's actually no use in going there. You will waste time by doing that. didn't really necessarily need to kite them as much since I am going to be killing them all at the same time. Having one that is much lower doesn't really do anything for me. I think right there I was negotiating whether or not I was going to go to get the third one because I have five minutes at this point to kill them and without runaway magic proccing it's fairly difficult to be able to uh, and that's just bad positioning right there. Yeah, so at this point I've decided I'm not going for the uh, the other Gigantes. I'm trying to get that shard that I left on the ground up there. It probably almost went away. But that was all just bad positioning. So yeah, at this point I've definitely committed to only taking up the five Gigantes which, don't worry, I'll go back for the sixth one after, um, after I kill Sarah. And yes, it is possible for those who have tried to kill them after you kill Sarah. There are little, there are little tricks 
to it. The thing that I say that is worrisome when you do take too much time is that right now, if you were not to get to the center of the map to Fenrir in this five minute time that she gave you when she warned you when we were walking up to this tower, if you didn't get there, then you don't get to fight the MVP at all. So that sucks, like really bad. But I guess if you're really just dedicated to getting the shards and you don't want to kill the MVP at all, then go ahead and just don't worry about that and just don't go to the MVP. Right now, I'm, I'm probably not anywhere near the five minute time. Probably at around three, probably still. We definitely had enough time to go kill the sixth, I'm sure. But uh, on a run, on my first run through on this character, I wasn't able to, uh, I missed it just by a little bit, but I'm sure I was doing stuff a lot more incorrectly because it took me a while to learn how to do this instance. Um, but I was, I actually missed the MVP and since then I decided that it was gonna be the five giant setup unless I was on Haven. So we go to the center, we've made it in the five minutes. We've got our five shards. And uh, with the St. Patrick's Day quest available right now, uh, with green ales healing and stuff, definitely do this instance and just burn green ales instead of potions. That's the greatest thing ever. They're gonna be super cheap. So yeah, we've walked around, triggered the instance of Sarah. They're gonna fight each other. Sarah's probably got like, I don't even know how much health. Like a lot, like tons, too much to count. But yeah, basically you can't do any damage to Sarah. All skills fail being cast on Sarah for the most part. You can't sense her, I know that. And it used to be that Bloodsucker failed, but sometimes it doesn't because it definitely hits in this video. So yeah, Fenrir is going to be the main damage dealer during this time. It's not really important what you do. You don't need to kill these creatures at all, which is why Painkiller Genetic is just so awesome here. You just literally sit back and just painkiller the whole time. You just stack up tons and tons of giants. And then towards the middle, when you want to kill them, you just throw down Demonic Fire and Wait for it to proc. Don't even car cannon unless no way magic procs. Life is good that way. Just clear the whole mob. But um, as you can see, Fenrir is slowly chopping her way away at Sarah. It's really a sequence of events. It's a timed sequence. I don't know how long it is, but obviously after going back and watching this, I'll know exactly how long it is. So right now I'm just trying to probably am I trying to stack them and kill them sometimes I'll stack them and just anodyne right off the other side and just leave them all behind as you can tell you see some of those 50,000s flying but you also see some ones flying and you're like why are the ones flying it's because some gigantes are immune to physical damage and some are immune to magical damage so can't do that um, obviously so there's going to be some left and when those ones are left over i'll just stack them up and leave them on the other side she curses and also stone curses so it's actually really nice to wear deadly armor here. Why I didn't bring one on genetic? We'll never know. Nice runaway magic. We can destroy some of those physical ones that are left. Burn those green ales, baby. I think at this point I'm not even using like, I don't really use many aloes. I'm basically just using green ales. 
So after some fancy graphics and long cast bars, it takes forever. This battle is way too long. And I guess it needs to be because throughout the battle you'll see that these Gigantes just continuously spawn. So it does really make it hard on classes that can't control them quickly and well. Rolling Cutter GX is like awesome here. So yeah, what I really do is just try to kill as many as I can to make my trip to Kisera a little easier when she does get down to black bar and you're able to actually damage her you'll see i'm pretty sure that this is the last cast bar of fenrir that puts sarah in critical when she puts her into critical black bar health um, she'll announce that it's time to kill her at that point you have 50 seconds to deal some people say 200 damage but i swear that on my crit gx attacking at 193 i can't kill her she just always naturally dies. So there's another way of killing them on GX, but one secret at a time. So yeah, there you go. Attacker. Now you have 50 seconds. I throw down demonic fire, and as you'll see, fire expansion, but it was not fire expansion level five. It was fire expansion level four which uses a tear gas, and as you can see, it is causing Sarah to cry because it is draining 5% of her health every second, or every five seconds, yeah. That's what Demonic Fire 4 that no one uses does. Once she is down to one health, throw a Bloodsucker on her, pop, and then you have a Sarah's Battle Robe, which drops at 10% chance. If you didn't notice, I popped the gum earlier back when we were killing the Gigantes because they actually also dropped this robe at a 1% chance. So it's nice to have extra chance at that. And we did get that. I can't take full credit because I tried killing Sarah at first using Summon Flora, which I thought can definitely do over 200 hits in 50 seconds with five plants wasn't able to because the plants target the Gigantes and since so many spawn right when Sarah goes into critical it's almost impossible to kill her that way. But I was tipped off by a, if anybody visits the War Portal forums or plays IRO Chaos you'll know one of the most knowledgeable players in the game, Zion, was able to provide me with the idea to try Fire Expansion 4. So now I expect to see Tear Gas popping all over Regale so that I don't have to keep farming it on my RK in Nine Broach Field. So now that Sarah is dead, we still have time to kill some of these Gigantes. So luckily I've got Runaway Magic, but you're like, dude, why are you kiting it? You need to stay with it when you have Runaway Magic. Not as important as getting out of here because after I don't know, it never happens in this video, so we won't know after watching this again how long it is. But eventually, if you take too long, Sarah will just start casting Lord of Vermilion on you from anywhere in the map, and it one-shots you. Like, it's not even actually Lord of Vermilion. It's literally just like, snap your dead graphic of Lord of Vermilion here. But, uh, yeah, so with that app, you, you don't want to be anywhere around when that happens, because you can like literally token, and you get five seconds to run, and then you just die again. So at that point, if you get hit with the Lord of Vermilion insta-kill, just log out or B-Wing and then go back and reset your timer. It's not even worth it trying after the map, or after that's happening, being on the map. Good little tip, though, is if you are stuck after the Sarah battle and you're like, oh, I'm never going to be able to make it out. This is taking me way too long to kill this thing. I don't want to die, but I really want these shards. Pull whatever giants you have left into a tower because the Lord of Vermilion thing won't, attack, won't affect you unless you're on the grass. So, well, I mean, probably the stone walkway too, but if you're in the towers, it will not affect you. You can stay there as long as possible. So do that if you can't get out. And then, I mean, be wing out. <laughs> so you don't have to waste tokens trying to walk out for a Yigberry. So at this point, I'm like kind of nervous, probably freaking out actually. And I only pulled these other Gigantes in here for better uh, runaway magic proc but um, 
didn't proc enough to make me comfortable. There it is, the giant shard. Now it's like, get out. Because, like, this whole time I'm expecting, like, uh, any second I'm going to explode. I'm going to cry. Because it's just such a pain to go back and reset your timer. Walk all the way through, back to Dimensional Gorge. And, um, I actually had to do that with this character last time. I forgot to reset his timer, and I ended up having it reset, like, two days late. So that's why I had to do this run on Wednesday. My other run is on Sunday. Or Monday. That's what it is. Monday. So now you've finally escaped. Nothing will kill you here. It's just Sarah talking smack about how she's going to kill you again. But not. And you get your Yigberry. And you get to jump on out. If it's your first time running the instance, talk to Professor Bernhard again. And you will get a Sarah's left or right ear, and you get to choose. One casts heal level one, one casts teleport level one. And both of them are enchantable and give you various different enchants that you can get through this guy right here. All you need is four shards per enchant, and there is a high possibility of breaking it. And there's a way higher possibility of getting a really bad enchant. <laughs>